Okay, so today we're going to think about a bit more on nutrition. And a question that people often ask me is around what sort of food should I be eating? Is there a cuisine in the world that I could just follow and it would lower all my risk factors for all these diseases and I'll just go and buy the, the cookbook on that cuisine and all my problems are solved? Well, the answer to that is no, there isn't really any one cuisine of the world that is just sorted it all out. There are many good examples and for most diseases or illnesses in the world we can think of a country that probably doesn't get that disease or gets it very little or maybe doesn't even have it at all. So we could think of the areas of Thailand, rural China, Japan, places in the Far East who do have considerably low levels of breast cancer, prostate cancer and things like that but on the other side of the coin they may have high levels of other cancers or struggle with other health conditions. Does that mean to say that cuisines is bad? Not at all. But it means that not everywhere has got it spot on. India also, we often talk about Indian cuisine, traditional Indian cuisine. And again, how they're very low in a lot of Western conditions. But on the other side, they have a lot of problems with other health conditions. The Mediterranean diet, a lot of people say, that's definitely the answer, isn't it? The Mediterranean diet. Well, it's got a lot of qualities, but we have noticed recently that in Greece, for example, a lot of Greek men are hitting rates of obesity now, which are very similar to those comparable to the United States. So what's going on there? Um, and it's true that the Mediterranean diet, there was a published paper in the British Medical Journal that looked at a Mediterranean style diet was linked to lower rates of cancer, diabetes and Alzheimer's. So that's the answer then you might say. Well, I don't think it's the complete answer. So sometimes as well we can look at a particular people group who are eating a certain food product. They seem to be living to 100 years of age plus and we think if I eat more of that product, maybe I'll live to be 100. Or maybe I'll have less risk of this condition or that condition. But it doesn't always work like that because, as you can imagine, no one country, no one continent has got it all correct. And generally it's quite hard to work out what is the advantage. Why is this particular country got lower levels of this condition? What is it? Is it their lifestyle? Is it their diet? Is it a mixture of the two? Um, and why do some countries do better than others? So what I'd like to do in this little session and the ones to come is look at some individual countries and areas of the world that might have lower rates of conditions and draw out a few food items, a few recipes and have a think about how could we incorporate that? How could we incorporate that into our own diet? So with that in mind, I think what we could say today to start with is, although no one country's got it all sussed out, what we could say is that countries that seem to do better for health and well-being do seem to have a trend in the overall type of foods they're eating. So I'm going to give you to begin with today, some points that you might want to write down, um, things you might want to steer your diet towards. So number one, what we find is generally those that do better have more vegetarian protein and fish protein. So they eat more things like that, that's a can of sardines by the way, they eat more fish protein and they eat more things like, what have we got here, a bag of different pulses, beans. They eat more vegetarian protein. Point number one. Number two, they eat generally more veg and more fresh fruit. So whatever's in season, they're eating more of this kind of thing more often and their veg and their greens as well more often. They're generally eating less wheat but more rice. So 
not eating wheat all the time, but the basmati rice, um, or other things that were wheat, for example, spaghetti made out of adami beans, is now not a wheat product anymore. So that's a big change. So less wheat, more rice. What's the next one? Less sugar and generally less overall carbohydrate. So if you think of a diet where people are eating just bread, pasta, pizza bases, biscuits, cakes, that sort of thing, it's wheat most of the day and a lot of that wheat's highly refined. So they're also eating less refined foods and more whole foods. What does that mean? It generally means the food before it's been changed. So the whole grain rice, not the white rice. The pot barley, not the pearl barley. So they're eating a food in its whole entirety. So they're eating the fiber, maybe the husk even. So they're going to get what more B vitamins, more antioxidants, more fiber. They're generally eating more legumes, which are beans, lentils, peas, chickpeas, any of that family. Generally, you will find, if you go out into the wilds of the Mediterranean, into the villages of, say, Spain, yes, they might eat a lot of red meat, but they always eat a lot of lentils or beans in some form with that, nearly all the time at every meal. Lastly, the last point, they eat generally more nuts and seeds. Not just as a one-off, not just a, a, a walnut on top of their walnut whip. But they also eat a lot more nuts in terms of snacking. Instead of ice cream at dessert, they'll probably have a load of almonds. They'll probably eat seeds as you would maybe eat a biscuit. So they're the, the, the first principles that we're going to look at today. So I'll just repeat more vegetable and fish protein, more vegetables and fresh fruits, less wheat, more rice, less refined food, more whole food, more beans and lentils, more nuts and seeds. So what I'm going to do in the next series of Tasty Tuesdays, I'm going to start looking at maybe some individual countries or areas of the world, have a little look at their lifestyle and their diet, and then I'm going to draw out a couple of recipes so that I can share with you next time. So I hope you've liked this little introduction just to get the ideas um, circulated and to have a think about it. So I'll see you next time. Happy eating. Bye.